Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video number 45. And in this video, we're still talking hypothesis testing, the Z distribution, but this time we'll do a two tail test. Hey, over in the PDFs near the end, pages 30 through 33, it has all of the Excel functions for all the formulas we're doing for hypothesis testing in this chapter 9. So that's a good one to download. In this video, we're going to see how to do a hypothesis test when sigma is known and it's a two-tail test. Now, last video, we looked at bottles of yummy red ketchup that had labeling of 16 ounces. And we did it from a consumer group's point of view where they thought they were potentially underfilling. This example is going to be from the manufacturer's point of view. And we'll see that how we set up the hypothesis test is different than the consumer. This is the manufacturer, so the point of view will be different and the setup will be different. So we have this yummy red ketchup. The label says 16 ounces. The bottle filling factory wants to make sure the filling machine is filling accurately. They do not want to fill too little and make the customer unhappy. And they do not want to fill too much and thus decrease profits. At the alpha of 0.05 is the process out of control. And we know the population standard deviation from past data. Always important to know your point of view. The point of view of this example here is manufacturers want to make sure that the machine is filling accurately. We're considering the population of all possible bottles that could come off the filling line. And our goal is to run a hypothesis test to provide statistical evidence to show whether the machine is filling accurately, yes or no. This is a two-tail because we care on either end if it's too much or too little. The first two examples we did in the last two videos, we cared about too much or too little. This one, we care about both. So I'm going to go straight to the null hypothesis, type space equals, and 16 ounces. Now I'm going to put hypothesized mean down here, 16 ounces. All right, and then I'm going to come up here and make a link to that. Last two examples, we started with the comparative operator for the alternative hypothesis. But this is a two-tail, so we go, hey, we start with that one. If this one's equal, this one is not equal. So I'm going to space less than, greater than. Now that's just how you do not comparative operator in Excel. And this one's 16 ounces also. So there's our alternative, our null. The null is going to indicate that it seems reasonable that the machine is filling accurately. If we accept the alternative, this will indicate the machine is not filling accurately. If it's not filling accurately, then you need to shut it down and fix the filling equipment. And this is a common example for machines that fill things, whether it's lettuce or bags of M&Ms or whatever it is. All right, our alpha, we're going to use 0 0.05. We'll come down here. We'll put in our uh, details and then do some calculating. We know that population standard deviation is 0.5 ounces. We don't have sample. We will next video when we do the T distribution. The statistic to use, well, it's Z, because we know sigma. The sample size equals count, because we have numbers. Control, shift, down arrow, shift, enter. And that gives us a sample size of 36. Those are the 36 bottles we pulled from the filling machine and weighed them. Our X bar, we'll use the average function to calculate the mean. Control, shift, down arrow and then enter. Alpha, the type of test, this is a two-tail. All right, our standard error, that's our standard deviation for the sampling distribution of x bars. Sigma divided by the square root of our n, 0 0.083. Actually, I'm going to round this just like we did in the last video, round it to the comma and tell it how many digits. We want to round to the second digit. All right, now let's do our test statistic. The numerator is x bar minus mu. That tells us the actual sampling error, or the point estimate of the difference. And we're going to divide it by our standard error. So we get 1.44. So that's 1.44 standard deviations above. Let's look at this picture here. 
All right, so there's a picture of the situation when you're doing a two tail. You have these two hurdles. Now we're given alpha of 0.5, so the alpha on each end has to add up 0.05. So we have to divide by two, so it's going to be 0.025. That determines the hurdle there. 0.025 determines the hurdle there. Anything to the left or to the right, we reject null hypothesis except the alternative. If we reject, it means the machine is not filling accurately. Any value within here, it seems reasonable that the machine is filling accurately. All right, so let's calculate our p-value. Now, when you get to a two-tail test, you got to think about this. Here's this 1.44, and the way p-value works is wherever it is here, wherever it is, it tells you with a positive number the probability of getting 1.44 or more. That's just on this side when there's a two-tail test. You have to double whatever single p-value you get. And we'll see a picture of that down here in just a moment. Now there's two different ways we can do this. I'm going to start with the idea that 1.44, well, these functions go from negative infinity up to that 1.44. And I'm interested in the upper part. So I'm going to say equals 1 minus and then do my uh, norm s dis r z comma 1 cumulative. Now that gives me 7.5% or 0 0.075 approximately. But this is a two-tail. That test says the probability in the upper end, you have to double it for a two-tail. Now if I come to the end and multiply it by 2, that will not work because we have to force that subtraction first. So I'm going to force the subtraction first. Now actually, this formula that I just did right there is not in the PDFs. Here's the one that's in the PDF. And either one is fine. Because this curve is symmetric, not, not the way I drew it. The standard normal curve or the sampling distribution of x bars is symmetric. If we have 1.44 here, the 1.44 on the low end is symmetrically placed, and the probability below it is the same as the probability above the 1.44 here. So we can not use the 1 minus and all that if we just use norm.sdist and trick it. If it's a positive here, I'm just going to say a negative. OK, so what that's going to do, if there's a 1.44 here, probability above, I'm tricking it. I'm going to say probability below. And that gives me that same 7. And then you can multiply by 2. Either one is fine. Now clearly, with our p-value rule, it's always going to be anytime p-value is less than or equal to alpha, reject h sub 0 except h sub a. Otherwise, fail to reject. So in this case, we just flat out fail to reject. 14 is bigger than 5. Now the critical value, we're going to use norm.s inverse. Now I want to calculate the low end. So this is alpha divided by 2. So I'm simply going to take alpha divided by 2 minus 1.96. Since it's symmetric, we simply have to take the opposite of that. Now watch this. Usually we go equals minus. If you just type minus and click right here, Control Enter, what it does is if you put a minus or a plus it is the first character in the cell, Excel knows it's a formula and puts in the equal sign for you. Conclusion, let's look at our picture here. Again, here's that picture of the p-value. We have a 1.44. The p-value tells us the probability of getting that or greater. We have to double it. So we get about 0.15. Here's our critical values. And clearly, the test statistic is between those. This is not symmetric. I didn't draw that one very well. And now our conclusion, based on the p-value, because the p-value of 0.15 is greater than alpha 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis because the test statistic of 1.4 is between our two critical values. We fail to reject h sub 0. That means the sample evidence suggests that the machine is filling properly. Said another way, at alpha of 0.05, the sample mean of 16.12 ounces does not provide statistically significant evidence to suggest that the process is out of control. In essence, our sampling error was not significant enough for us to stop the machine, take it apart, fix it. Uh, we do run a 5% risk of a type 1 error, which means we might say the machine is filling accurately when it is not. 
All right, so that's the third example of hypothesis testing. All three of our examples so far have been sigma known. We've seen upper tail, one tail to the right, lower tail, one tail to the left, and two tail. In our next video, we'll talk about what we do when we don't know sigma, and we use the t distribution. All right, see you next video.